So it's no secret now that it looks as though Mikey Garcia is actually going to step up to 147 pounds and challenge Errol Spence Jr. Now the latest in this is that Mikey Garcia has actually given up his IBF belt at lightweight. So this is just making it look more and more likely. The uh, pieces are all being moved into position for this fight to take place. It's not yet been officially announced. It's not yet been signed as far as I'm aware. But all the rumors and all the articles and all the different boxing publications, mainstream boxing publications, are speculating that this fight is, or an announcement on this fight is imminent. Now, a lot of people love this fight. And I've seen some people who hate this fight. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. I like the way Mikey Garcia is shooting for greatness. But I can understand why people might be frustrated with Errol Spence because he's got a rival who people would rather see him fight in the welterweight division in Terence Crawford. But he seems reluctant to make that fight. He's talking about Terence Crawford needs to cross the street. He's using a lot of Floyd Mayweather language. Mayweather used to talk like this and he used to drag people up the wall. And he seems to have turned a little bit deaverish, Errol Spence, talking about Terence Crawford in all these kind of disrespectful and disparaging ways. So that's disappointing. And obviously, uh, Mikey Garcia is an Al Heyman fighter. He's a Showtime fighter. And so is Errol Spence. So it's kind of an in-house situation. And you can understand why they're trying to make that fight. And look, all promoters, I know Al Heyman is not officially a promoter, but unofficially, most of us regard him as a promoter. And most promoters, when they can, will try to have a bunch of in-house fights because it's risk reward, right? If you're going to have one of your fighters fight outside your stable against somebody else promoted by someone else, you want to be adequately compensated for that. The fight better be huge for you to be allowing your fighter to do that. This is the mentality of many promoters out there. You look at Bob Arum when he had Manny Pacquiao and he had Tim Bradley and who else did he have? Marquez. These guys were fighting each other again and again and again. Pacquiao fought Marquez four times. Bradley fought Pacquiao three times. Bradley fought Marquez, you know? And he had other fighters as well, Bob Arum, that he would recycle and get them all to fight each other. So Bob Arum was doing this in-house business all the time. Al Heyman also does this in-house stuff. Eddie Hearn does a lot of in-house fights where he can. So this is just standard practice by a lot of promoters. And it is frustrating, but you have to ask yourself, are the in-house fights that bad? And in this instance, Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence is not that bad. It's not my number one priority fight. I'd much rather see Errol Spence versus uh, Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence versus... Well, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford is obviously not an in-house fight. And that would be the top of my list of priorities. But there are other... You know, there are in-house fights that I wouldn't mind seeing. Errol Spence versus Sean Porter. I like that fight. Errol Spence versus Keith Thurman, but we don't know what's going on with Thurman when he's going to come back. Errol Spence versus even Amir Khan. Errol Spence versus uh, who else now? Danny Garcia. I mean, I wouldn't mind these fights. These are in-house fights, which are not bad at all. And look, at the end of the day, Al Heyman still has most of the top welterweights. He's even got Manny Pacquiao now. And in fact, let's throw Manny Pacquiao's name into the mix. The winner of Pacquiao Broner against the winner of Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence. I like that fight. You know? So, yeah, it's not ideal. There are fights I would rather see instead. <clears throat> but you got to take what you're given in boxing <laughs> a lot of the time. And you got to make the most of it. So... 
On one hand, you can see this as Errol Spence cherry-picking a smaller guy when he should be taking care of business in his own division. And I think that's a legitimate criticism. But at the same time, you've got a great fighter in Mikey Garcia stepping up several weight divisions, daring to be great. Remember, Mikey Garcia is undefeated. I talked in a, another video about how people criticize this particular era in boxing because there are so many fighters who want to protect their O and not take risks. What's Mikey Garcia doing? He's taking a massive risk. Is he trying to protect his O? No. He's trying to take a massive risk in fighting Errol Spence. So hats off to Mikey Garcia. Let's see if he can do what people like Sugar Ray Leonard managed to do back in the days. What people like Roberto Duran managed to do back in the days. And step up, as I say, several weight divisions and take on monsters and win. Roberto Duran famously took on, well, he took on so many bigger fighters. Roberto Duran's best years were at lightweight. But yet this guy had great wins at junior middleweight against people like Davey Moore. A, uh, a tremendous win at middleweight against Aaron Barkley. He obviously lost fights too, like against Tommy Hearns, you know, Marvin Hagler, although he pushed Hagler close in that fight. He dared to be great. And he was great. So that is what Mikey Garcia is attempting to do right here. Be a little man going up to take on a beast at 147 in Errol Spence. And I commend him for that. So I tend to focus more on what Garcia is doing here rather than what Spence is doing. And what I mean by that is I focus on the upside of this fight rather than the downside. Because this is not just any old lightweight moving up two divisions. This is Mikey Garcia. This is a guy who's already a multi-weight world champion. So, look, Errol Spence, I would imagine, is going to be the favorite in the fight, and understandably so. But as much as Errol Spence will have physical advantages of height and reach and physical strength, punching power, etc., he's not going to outskill Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is very skilled himself. Do you understand? It's not like Mikey Garcia is going to be out of his depth skill-wise. So, and, and that is often the case in boxing, right? Is you get fights where even at the top level, fighters are outskilled. When you have fight, like for example, when you have a matchup which people are saying is a, a mismatch, it's usually a mismatch because somebody's going to get outskilled. They're not just going to get KO'd, they're going to get outclassed totally. Mikey Garcia ain't going to get outclassed by Errol Spence. He might get overpowered, potentially, but he ain't going to get outclassed. Yeah, when it comes to pure skills, Mikey Garcia is right up there with the best of them. So, anyway, let me know what you think about this potential matchup in the comment section below. It's Hatman, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.